talk about Everton on the weekend. Big game this weekend. Obviously, Antonio Conte's first Premier League game uh, for Spurs. And what are we expecting this weekend? What are we expecting? Because obviously against Vitesse, we've just spoken about at length, but we saw a very, you know, we saw a Conte Spurs and we saw yeah. a Nuno Spurs yeah. all in the same game, didn't we? So what are we expecting this weekend? I am pretty much, because you've got to remember, Everton are on a bad run as well. Mm. They're on a bad run. They started off well with Rafa and the last few games, especially the Watford one, which I believe was their last home game, um, they were booed off like we were yep. against United. And the pressure, obviously, is not going to take long to go on to Rafa because of his uh, Liverpool links. I to tell you the truth, I am expecting an exact replica of what you guys saw yesterday. Oh, really? Not, not like Scott. I mean, I think it's going to be one of those crazy... We're on top, they're on top, topsy-turvy. Uh, expect Andros Townsend to have an absolute worldy. Um, Shooting from yeah. 30 yards every yeah. 30 seconds. Yeah. Um, Damari Gray is a player I love and I wish we'd got, and I think he'll he'll turn up. For but, price as well. But yeah, for one point, I don't understand, for 1.5 million yeah. why we didn't go for him. Um, remember, I was on a show with you on uh, Irish Hotspurs, and I was saying that. Um, and, yeah, so I think it's going to be a really, really entertaining Maybe quite high scoring again game, but I think we'll have enough to get the three points. Bob? Yeah, yeah, it'd be, it'd be interesting to see how many players who played yesterday will, will be starting against Everton. I think Dyer, I think Romero will, Hoybier, Skip, <laughs> Regulon, Emerson. Um, the only question is probably Davis. I personally think he will. I wouldn't be surprised if we saw the exact same eleven start against Everton. I really wouldn't. What am I expecting? We've got a good record against Everton. We always like goals at their at Goodison Park, don't we? The six. So does Harry Kane. Yeah, and, and so does Harry Kane. And it's no point asking me what I predict the scoreline's <laughs> likely to be for 41 years. I can predicted a, a win every single game. But, but you know what? In the last five years, the result, we've had a 6-2 up there. there we've lost 5-4 up there. Yeah. I mean, there's been crazy games, crazy isn't it, games, between yeah. Spurs and Everton? Yeah, yeah. And like Brian says, they're not playing great football. Benitez under under pressure already. Um, but uh, they've got good players. Townsend's likely to have a worldie. He's played all right this season. He's as played well, very well this season. He's impressed me, to be He's fair. Impressed me um, this season. But um, I don't think DCL's back yet. He, he won't nope. be back for, He's for a while. He's too busy doing sky coverage. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> What's that all about? <laughs> uh, I, I obviously expect us to go there. And, and I think we're having an, a few more days under Conte can only be a blessing. And like I say, yesterday's game's going to help Conte so much. More than any training session would have helped as well. Agree. So, um, yeah, Spurs win, of course. When you're looking at the form against us, it was just on screen a minute ago. Only one win in our last five games against Everton. Mm. But on the flip side, away at Everton, yep. do you know the last time we lost there? 2019, 2018? No, no. I think it's longer than that. No, in the league. In the league. It's longer than that. We lost there in the cup, um, yeah. obviously, five for the under season, Jose. Yeah, so... Uh, but I'll tell you now, in the league, the last time we lost was 2012. Wow. Okay, I was going to be a little bit low. I was going to go closer to 2000, but yeah, we, we, we How do. How mad uh, is that, though? That's How mad crazy, is that? man. It, it is crazy. Like I said, they, they're normally, these games are actually normally quite insane. I remember when Robbie Keane used to score hat-tricks against them. They, they've always, this, this actual game and this fixture, mm. I remember going to a game where Gaza tore them apart, yeah. um, literally tore them apart single-handedly. They have always been very entertaining games. I can't remember. Apart from the 1-0 that we had uh, with uh, Hoiberg's first game, I can't really remember a dull Spurs-Everton no. game. Do you, think, do you think this will be of the same ilk, though, now? They got Rafa Benitez, we got Conte. I mean, two fairly pragmatic managers. Do you think it will still be one of these high-scoring yep. games, free-flowing games? And do you think that's just a case of because of that we're just at the beginning of a new regime? Yeah, completely. That's exactly what I think. I mean, like you said... We're, I think we've just got. He might. I think. I think he may, might might make a couple more changes. But I think he's literally going to demand more of that first thirty minutes. Yeah. I know Everton are obviously a much higher calibre than uh, Vitesse, with no disrespect. But they've got Dominic Calvert Lewin out. I can't remember who else they've got out. But he is huge. Decore, oh, Decore is right. another massive. Decore, yeah. And you know what? Calvert Lewin's their highest goal scorer this season. Yeah. Decore's got their most assists this season. Yeah. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. Let's have a look. We've got it up here now. Uh, oh, Yerry Mina's out as well. Oh, come on. Oh, God. This should be... And Gomez is out again. Yeah. Okay, 20... Is that, say, 25% chance? Yeah. yeah. Okay, okay. So, yeah, so they are four huge players for them. Yeah. The, one, the one player I love at Everton who really scares me a lot is Luca Digna. 
Mm, I think yeah. he's a great, great left and back. And with Luca Dean, he's actually been out injured, but they're expecting him to be fit for this Why one. Why do I speak? Yeah. Uh, but, but yeah, he, he is... Worry, it's not your fault. He was already fit before yeah. you said okay, it. No, no, no. <laughs> your fault. Just, uh, <laughs> I, I have a, but yeah, I just think that literally uh, those four players out, especially the top three, are, are huge, are huge. But I still think, like I said, this is going to be a very, very high-scoring game. I agree with Dean. He's got a fantastic um, cross on him and he's got... He's got a good stamina, but then when that's where Emerson should come in. You know, if he plays yep. the way he can, it's up to him to keep uh, Dinier back. And I think Benito will 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 see this as we need to win this, so they might start off the game on the front foot as well. Mm. And if they do, we always like play a, a team who come come for us. And uh, with the likes of Lucas, Sonny, and Kane up front, I think it will be. Uh, every chance it could be a high scoring game yeah and when you were talking about the star men for Everton before we, we spoke about Damari Gray we spoke about Andros Townsend mm. uh, as you can see on screen now Damari Gray five key passes inside the box this season Oh, sorry, fifth in the Premier League for key passes inside the box. And obviously, Richarlison, we all know the quality he yep. has. Um, three goals and assists in his last six uh, for Everton. Um, how do we keep these guys quiet, especially Richarlison? Yeah. The thing about Richarlison, he doesn't have a, a, a set place as he plays all over, mm -hmm. all over the front. It will come down to how, which back three we play. I think we'll play with the same. It's going to come down to what Conte can can install install in these in these back three players um with, with regards to our, our wing backs they need to do their job and, and obviously hold all the flankers back but richarlison is always been a dangerous player is always and i've loved him and you know i wasn't surprised that the likes of barcelona were, were, were looking for him if there is one dangerous player one danger player who's going to get on the score sheet potentially on on sunday against us i'd say it's him so, yeah, I definitely agree with you with Richardson. The one thing is we can't have Eric Dyer on him. We can't because... Well, <laughs> the only reason I say... It, you're, no, Romero's no, yeah, going exactly. yeah. to have to deal with Exactly, him. because the one thing is Dyer will match him for power. But one thing is Richardson just stays on you like a, like a rush. And the very second you make that mistake, he's go. gone and done. And it's just what comes off that. So he is a, a huge handful. Now, Damari Gray. Damari Gray is someone I've rated since he was uh, going to Leicester. Um, when he, I think it was at Birmingham and he left for Leicester, we were going for him and obviously we know it didn't happen, we know why it didn't happen then when he moved to uh, Germany, I wanted to go for him yeah. because he's one where, again, his attitude seems to be called into question but under the right manager, he is a huge threat and he's shown it at Everton um, his pace, again we've got it where uh, it'll be a huge game for either Regulon or, uh, or Eberson because he can switch wings, he is so effective and again, his his delivery is phenomenal. Yep. His de that's why he's fifth in the Premier League. Yep. I thought like you would have been fire keep, but fifth in the Premier League. And you think about all the creative players that are in there, he is a major major threat. Yeah, yep. completely agree. Uh, big big game this weekend. Obviously, it's the last game before international break and. Mm. <laughs> We can all celebrate because it's the last international break for a while. Uh, well into the new year is the next one. So how important is it to, to win this game, to have a nice feeling going into this international break? And when you're looking at the, the fixtures after Everton, you're talking about Leeds at home, Leeds, yeah. Burnley away, Brentford at home, Norwich at home, Brighton away, and then obviously Leicester and Liverpool after that. Mm. But we've got a nice run of five fixtures where yep. you know, you're looking at picking up you know, maximum, if not very close to maximum points out of those next five games, aren't we? Yeah, 100%. And of course, we, we all expect, we all want Spurs to, to win against Everton. Um, if it's a draw, then we'd have to take it. But I don't think it would have been as toxic or it would have been as heads down over the international break if it was a Nuno in charge. With it being Conte, at least we could say, right, at least go away, do the international break get to know his players a bit more, work out a tactic. We'll look at potential players to bring in in, in Jan as well. Yeah, I still expect us to win, but I, I think uh, a draw or a loss, which I don't think we will, but a draw against Everton going to the international break wouldn't be as toxic field as it would be under, under Nuno. So, so, yeah, I mean, first of all, for the last couple of years, I've been praying for international breaks. I've been like, please, just get yeah. put me out of my misery. I don't <laughs> care. Just let me and my wife have a peaceful, stress-free two yeah. weeks where nothing goes wrong. And now we've got <clears throat> now we've got the man. <clears throat> you, excuse me. You, you think about it, the last few, under Mourinho and under uh, Nuno, obviously, these players have been going on to international duties and they've been seeing the Manchester City players or, or whatever. And 
we have been bad to Club FC. And now when they walk in, they're going to be like, oh my God, you've got Conte. How have you done that? What's he like? And it's going to be yeah. such... Another... They're going to be a fear factor for teams playing. It, exactly. Oh, yeah. And they're going to see the different... They, they will see close quarters when they go from when they leave international go back to their teams. They go, listen, the Tottenham boys that we're with, whatever country they're representing, they've got a spring in their step. What are your score predictions, guys, for the weekend? <laughs> You know what? I'm, I'm, I, I said I don't think it's to be as the same. I'm going to go for the same score as yesterday. 3-2 three, two, three, two Spurs. Bob? 3-2 yeah, as well. 3-2. Yeah, I think we'll concede a couple. Still getting used to that uh, back three. Uh, but with uh, Kane looking back to uh, a bit of a bit, a bit of the old uh, old self and, and Sonny and Lucas, yeah, I, I think we'll, we'll score. I, I wouldn't be surprised if it was 3 nil up and they're scoring 2 all, but... But yeah, we'll win. Of course we'll win. With Decore and, and Calvert-Lewin out, I mean, they've been terrible since they have been out. Um, I'm struggling to see how they get goals this weekend. I might Set plays. Set, plays. Yeah, yeah, set pieces set. Is, is the one. Uh, obviously, with Luca Dean being back as yeah. well to provide them. Um, but obviously, they've got Damari Gray and Andros Townsend mm. who have also been performing this season. So I don't think it's going to be as high as, um, as last night. I'm going to go 2-1 Spurs. I'm going to go 2-1 yeah. Spurs. And I think it's going to be another Harry Kane performance at Goodison Park, oh, yeah. uh, in my opinion. Then. He loves it there, doesn't he? He does indeed. He yeah. does indeed. All right, so that's the score predictions. Uh, Bob and Brian going for 3-2. I'm going for 2-1 to Spurs. Let me know in the comments section what you think the score is going to be this weekend. Yeah!